Hello, my name is Avanish. My name is Victor. My name is Ria. And I'm Matthew. And we're from 16460, the Gearheads, and today we'll be giving you a brief demonstra uh, demonstration of our 30 hour build robot. First thing I want to talk about right off the bat is that to account for the low uh, hanging bridges this year, we designed this uh, flip, uh, flip down mechanism, as you see here with the servo. So basically this entire lift mechanism can be moved up and down. And we, so in the beginning of autonomous, this, uh, the servo flips down and the entire thing will flip down to account for the low uh, uh, hanging bridges. This video on fun is made possible by viewers like you and also the following. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. So for this year's mission, we, op we optimized our road runner. Um, for the basic missions right now, we can do uh, move forward, backward, straight left, straight right. And also, we can go from one position to another one following the designated route. And this roadrunner system is using our uh, odometry pods on the bottom of the robot for precise navigation. So, and then next thing we'll be talking about is the basic controls. So, Matthew, do you want to start with the robot? So for the uh, so for precise control of the robot and easy navigation for the drivers, we're using both the uh, FOV system, so it keeps the frame of reference of the driver, and then also a state machine. So the state machine lets us control this elevator system really easily, as Matthew uh, as Matthew is showing you. So after we drop the robot, we can run through each of the states, so uh, we can uh, kind of show you what it what it means. So. The robot can easily transition between four states. The first one is this resting state on the ground. And then after Matthew finds the correct pixel that he's going to pick up, he can hover over it and go into the pickup state, which, is, which then the cloth goes onto the ground, and then Matthew will back up, pick up the, uh, pick up the uh, pixel, and drive over to the backdrop. So after the backdrop, Matthew can press another button, which will raise up the elevator very easily. Matthew hasn't really had to do much control. And, uh, he, uh, and then he'll, he'll be able to drop it onto the backdrop. So the state machine that we implemented uh, helps us uh, control the robot really easily. And uh, we'll just keep uh, showing you a couple more pixel drops so you can get used to how the robot works. So this is our uh, general teleapp uh, control function. And, and we have a, more, a couple more functionalities on the robot. And one of the main ones that we're implementing this year in our 30 hour build is this hanging function. As you guys know, in end game, we get an extra 20 points if the robot is able to hang. So after this pixel, Matthew will demonstrate that one. Okay, so let's head over to the hanging station so that they can yeah, go to this one right here, this red one. Yeah. So, so we're kind of using like a winch system using uh using that uh, string on, that's controlled by a motor. So this hook will go and grab on to the uh, truss and then it'll hang on. So after, after, it's, after it's secured, we can use the game pad and the uh, motor controlled thread and that will lift up the robot and we will be able to hang and get our end game points. So uh, uh, that's, that basically gives you an overview of how a robot works. And um, so that's it. Yeah. Any questions in the chat? We can take them right now. Uh, let's talk about uh, from code wise and things. And a lot of teams will ask oh, about yeah, that. Sure. Can you describe a little bit more if you did anything and what it was inside your robot? Uh, about but yeah, anything you've done from a code yeah. perspective. Victor, do you want to talk about that? Any innovative points in our code? I see. It's been uh, about the program, yeah. Sure. All right. So for this year's mission, oh, so for this year's mission, we use uh, state machine and Avanish already mentioned that. So by pressing one button. The whole robot transforms from uh, Wednesday to another, to the uh, Thursday, and to the fourth day, and goes all the way back to the uh, starting case. And um, yeah. Um, I know we do have a couple questions starting to come in from chat here, so let's talk. Uh, grab a couple of those too. Can can you launch the drone? Um, we can, but it currently doesn't go over. So while we are. Hanging on to the, I'll demonstrate it. While we hang on to this, um, the pole, the rule states that you're allowed to, uh, you can turn the robot out, Anish. You're allowed to launch the drone or the paper airplane from either behind these gates or while you're hanging on the gates. Um, okay, just get it straight. So our goal was while we hang on to it, you can press A. 
while we hang on to the pole, so we're getting those end game points, we would also try to launch the paper airplane over the back of the field because it's just less distance to cover. Um, Another question is from Robo Codex, which is what language of code did you guys use? Java, right? <laughs> yeah, Java. Um, and then a question from Dhruv Kothari is what type of motor is used for the hang? Um, right now it's a 60 RPM. It's a planetary gear motor, just like most of the other go build a motors on the market, but it's just a really, really high torque motor. So the whole robot can be supported by it. Um, so here Victor will demonstrate the, uh, launch of the drone. <laughs> so currently it doesn't work, but with a little more power, it would get over the wall. That's the thing. There's a question from not paid guitarist gamer. What kind of mechanism are you using for the drone launcher? Um, right now, um, right now it's just two motors with compliant wheels on them running opposite directions to launch a drone out. Um, the biggest issue we have with that compared to a design like a rubber band like a lot of other teams have right now is that it doesn't get like the startup speed or doesn't have as continuous of a push through the airplane and that's why it's not making it over the wall. So, uh, Gearheads, uh, looking, you had such a successful year last year. As you're looking here into uh, center stage, what excites you the most about this game? What have you learned from Robot in 30 Hours? Um, I think a lot of us here, like I speak for most people here, is that um, we're excited about how many elements are part of the game. Last year, it was mainly just one element with putting the cones onto the poles, but this year there's a whole bunch of elements. Um, the biggest learning we have from this year is just how compact things really need to be with the low hanging bridges, I think. And that that's really going to challenge teams because although you can make your robot 18 inches, I don't think you'll see a lot of 18 inch robots this year. Just We're going to take one more question from the audience. And then of course, audience will try to get uh, any questions you might have outstanding for that team after they're on. All right. There's a question from not that cat. What if the hook gets stuck on the truss? Well, uh, right now, if it does get stuck on the truss during the game moving back and forth, um, we're kind of stuck, but it does stay under. So that hasn't been an issue, but that's what that this little plastic arm allows us to do is keep it down under the truss level until we need it to come up so we're hanging on. The only truss that would get stuck on right now is a 12-inch one while we're going through it, but the 14 inch one, we can clear it because we designed it so that the uh, hook will hang under the 14 inch bar, but the 12 inch truss is what we're having some problem with clearing is what we get stuck with. Well, Gearheads, uh, congratulations on the great Robot 30 Hours build. Uh, audience, give them a big round of applause here for an awesome robot. This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.